Watch a movie, get inspired, give back, help a charity. It's time for a movie karma watch party. Hey everybody, I'm Jared Milrad and welcome to another Movie Karma Watch Party. Uh, this is a series that we're doing to recognize, interview, and celebrate social impact filmmakers from around the world. Uh, and today I'm really excited to have an award-winning filmmaker, uh, Brandon Moore, who directed the film Dennis, the Man Who Legalized Cannabis. Uh, this is a film that we just celebrated as part of our Show for a Change Film Festival, and we're really excited to have Brandon with us today. So Brandon, welcome to the conversation. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, so to dive right in, uh, Brandon, we'd love to learn just a little bit more about your background as a filmmaker, how you got into uh, making docs like this one, and just tell us a little bit about that, that journey for you. Yeah, so uh, I grew up in Southern California as a skate rat, uh, filming my friends, uh, skateboarding, getting tricks. First, uh, first camera and uh, iMac uh, for editing. So kind of got me into the game of filmmaking pretty early on. And um, that sort of really formed my identity as a filmmaker for this sort of like verite, um, you know, kind of capture what's in front of the camera as it's happening, uh, let it unfold naturally sort of approach. Yeah, which I felt was really, really neat in, the, in this film, which we'll talk about in a, in a minute in terms of having us connect with, with the folks you were interviewing. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your journey to, to making documentaries. I'm just curious if, if this is an area of a uh, of film of the craft that you're particularly interested in, uh, and, it, and also if social impact storytelling, stories that have some kind of social res resonance, is, is that something that particularly attracts you? Yeah, um, so I never really set out to and said one day that I want to make documentary films. Um, to be completely honest, I don't really watch too many. I probably should watch more documentaries. Um, I'm more so gravitate to fiction and, you know, uh, more scripted content. However, um, I sort of just fell into documentary filmmaking coming up uh sort of starting up from scratch in you know not in the sort of hollywood world but up here in uh the bay area in san francisco oakland santa cruz area um i've lived in all three at some point in the last 15 20 years and uh, it you know came down to um, how do I make a living doing this um, thing, making films? And uh, ended up, you know, partnering with, you know, startups, small companies, small businesses, and really um, where we found uh, a niche was uh, real, real people storytelling, finding, uh, you know, whether it's like testimonials or people that are, you um, you know, representing these brands or businesses, um, we want to be truthful to the people and to their stories. So, um, yeah, it's kind of just come naturally. And um, sorry, what was the last last part of that question? Yeah, no worries. I was asking about the the social impact uh, part of your storytelling. I felt like that was a, that was a key part of this film, uh, which we'll talk about. Is that something that attracts you to, to the stories you tell? Absolutely. Um, I think if uh, there's like you, it can't be um, overstated enough the power of film and what you can accomplish with film when it comes to social change. Um, and that was a huge motivator for myself to pursue this project, uh, Dennis. Um, it's just an incredible story. Um, just even on paper, it just jumps out at you. And uh, I really, when approaching a lot of these pr projects these days, which you would consider like passion projects, um, I, I want to be able to have them give a lasting impression and uh, really uh stand the test of time and so 
dive into these uh, lessons about life and about, you know, just e exploring these deeper themes that really are timeless. Yeah, which I think this film does really well. Um, on that point, could you tell us a little bit, uh, Brandon, about, about Dennis and about this story um, for folks who haven't seen the film yet? It's a short documentary, uh, and we'll, we'll talk in more detail in a second, but if you could just give us an encapsulation of, of who Dennis was and, and how you were drawn to this story. Yeah, so uh, Dennis Perone, um, it was many things. Um, he was a, a veteran, um, a gay man, a social activist. Um, he was an extremely caring person. Um, he was tough. Uh, he did not back down to authorities and people who thought they were on the right side of history at the time. <laughs> um, so basically, Dennis uh, came back from Vietnam in the, uh, I think it was the early 70s, late 60s, settled in San Francisco. And uh, naturally in the Castro, um, the gay district, and basically uh, became a, a huge um, leader in the community and specifically in regards to uh, medical marijuana. And he was actually the first one to open the first ever uh, cannabis club, cannabis buyers club. And this was specifically geared towards not what we typically find today, which is more recreational, um, but this uh, idea that cannabis is a medicine and should be uh, widely available to people who need uh, medicine and cannabis for its benefits, that being, you know, uh, appetite stimulants. Um, a lot of these people that were coming in were uh, a lot were, uh, you know, cancer patients and, uh, you know, glaucoma, all these ailments that really uh, made it difficult with all these heavy drugs that their doctors and mainstream medicine were prescribing them. And then you have cannabis, which is, you know, still very much so in the war on drugs. Um, and Dennis was uh, just a proponent his whole life for this and eventually ended up um, co-authoring Proposition 215 in 1996, uh, which basically is the first was the first step in what we now are seeing today with this sort of second wave, third, maybe even third wave, I don't know, of right. cannabis. It's, um, it's kind of, he, he is responsible for many of the things we are able to do today when, when it comes to cannabis. Yeah, it's really an extraordinary story. And I, I was struck by, I mean, you, you touched on this uh, just now, but just the courage that, that Dennis had, um, not only, as you said, as an activist, as a veteran, but also as a, as a gay man, an out gay man at the time, at the time when, um, you know, LGBTQ folks were discounted and discarded, literally. Um, and he was, he was serving folks who were, who were dying with AIDS, as you document in the film. Can you talk just a little bit about that part of the history, you know, just, just centering the story in the cash, right? Now you got a lot of really amazing shots of the, you know, of the district today and sort of the, the pride flag and just, just centered, mm -hmm. I think you really centered it in the LGBTQ history of the story. Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's actually something I was going to touch upon. Uh, you know, it started with ca uh, cancer patients and basically uh it was sort of like a really terrible thing had to happen for something really good to happen so mm -hmm. you have the aids epidemic coming really starting to heat up in the late 80s early 90s um dennis lost a lot of really close friends and amazing people um that were all part of this movement and uh, basically the clubs were there to support these people that were 
had this chronic wasting syndrome, all these mm-hmm. things from these terrible, there, there was no drug at the, at, at a time in the early nineties, there were no drugs for H, HIV or AIDS um, at that time. So mm-hmm. people were scrambling to figure out how am I going to live? How am I going to survive? How, how am I going to r- retain a quality of life worth living? And Dennis realized early on that, you know, the cannabis was helping. And so he made it his life goal to make sure that people were able to get access to that. And so uh, with the AIDS epidemic, you know, came a huge op- opportunity for Dennis to really get um, this uh, cannabis as a medicine into the, the media into the media's attention from a positive standpoint, not as negative. That was the, the Dennis's, uh, he was extremely savvy at leveraging Mm -hmm. the media and its uh, portrayal of cannabis, um, especially at this time where you're just getting out of the Reagan era, you know, war on drugs and you're figuring out how do we shed this old way of what people think of cannabis, of who we think uses cannabis? And he said, come into my clubs, see for yourselves, the doors are open. And by doing that, people started to realize, oh, these are, these people look like my grandma. They, uh, (laughs) These, these are, these are real, real people. And um, they seem to be, you know, getting a lot of help. So he really leveraged the media. And I think when I approached making this film, I knew from the get go that that was going to be a, an integral piece to crafting the story, which was finding this, uh, this different uh, archival footage that showed this Mm. shift from cannabis as the Cheech and Chong show all the way to this is saving lives. And this is, this is real. We need to pay attention to this. Hey everybody, I'm Jared Milrad, the founder of Movie Karma. Thanks so much for stopping by our page. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this channel with your friends and family so we can continue to transform entertainment into action.